One of the things I wanted to put together a screencast on, which is probably worth doing now since the plugins are live, is the different things that you can do with the settings page uh, on Events Calendar Pro. You do have quite a bit that you can configure on that settings page, which a lot of people aren't aware of when they install the plugin. So I wanted to make sure that you guys knew how to use this and how you can really take advantage of it to make the most of this plugin as you go forward. Right now I'm on the dashboard of my site. I have the plugin active already. So I'm gonna scroll down into settings and find the events calendar. Since I do have Pro and Core active, I do have my license key information here. I've already entered the license key. You know it works because I get this green message over to the right. Expires quite a bit of time from now. I still have almost a year. So I'm in good shape. This is a valid key. I'm set on the license front. Down below that is the first setting that I can actually configure, which is my default view for the events. Right now, uh, the events live at slash events. We'll get to that in a minute. And so what I'm telling the system here is when somebody comes to slash events on my site, do they see these events in a grid, calendar, or in a list, event list? Right now, if I go over to the front end of the site, you'll see that when I go to the events page, they are showing up in grid view. That's because that's what I have set on that page. If I had changed that to list, they'd be showing up like this. And now you're not limiting your audience one way or another because they do have the ability to toggle back and forth between the two. You're just telling them which to see by default, but they're not gonna be, let's say you set events list, they're not gonna be unable to see the grid view. It's just a matter of what they see at the offset when they come to that events page. The next offering is the show comments section. This is just a checkbox where you can decide whether or not you want to enable comments, uh, which will appear just like any other WordPress post on your events. The next one would be the multi-day event cutoff. Now this is for people who have events that are ending at a certain point on the final day and that they don't want that to show up on Gridview for the final day. To rephrase that in a way that might make more sense, let's say you're a DJ and you host events from 9.30 Friday night until 3.30 Saturday morning. You don't want that event to show up on Saturday in Gridview because that'll confuse your readers and make them think the event actually takes place that day. It doesn't really take place that day, it just started the day before and extends into that day. So this is where this will come in handy. If you come into this multi-day event uh, cutoff section, you set this drop down to 3.30. What this tells the system is any event that ends at 3.30 a.m. or earlier, don't show it on the final day in grid view. So right now, if we were following the criteria outlined in my scenario a second ago, and this event takes place Friday night through Saturday morning, it's only gonna show up on Friday in grid view so long as it ends at 3.30 or before. The next one is the enable Google Maps. This is gonna be a checkbox that you turn on. Once it's turned on, the height will default to 350, the width to 100%. You can feel free to change these as you see fit, but these are just the defaults that we thought looked best. And basically you have to turn this on to make sure that your events both show the front end embedded map and if you're using the pro version, the back end map preview. The events URL slug is what we were talking about a minute ago where we determine where on the site the events live. Now this is gonna to default to, for the actual main events page, events, for single events, event. And notice that these aren't the same. These cannot be the same. You cannot have events in both places. You are going to have to have some deviation on them. So let's say you set this as conventions. Down here you should probably set this as convention. You can control these as much as you see fit, but they are always going to default to events and event. The debug mode, you really probably won't have to use this too much. This will just log debug information. Uh, it is also going to you know, show some information on your screen though about bugs and, and errors in the code that may give you problems. They're not gonna really pose an issue with your site, but they're gonna show up on, this, on the back end here. And so if you don't wanna see those, no need to turn this on. The theme settings are actually configuring the plugin so that it plays nicely with your theme. Now we have updated the theming a bit for these uh, new versions for the 2.0 releases. So things have changed a bit to make it more flexible and to make it easier to integrate with a wider range of themes. You're gonna see we have it set to default to the default events, or excuse me, default page template. You also have the default event template. These ones are the ones that both come built into the plugin. And then your theme will probably have some other ones. My theme right now, the default 2011 theme, also offers me the showcase template and the sidebar template. Whatever theme you're using will probably have some different offerings here. You're gonna to wanna to play around and see what looks best as you integrate the plugin with your theme. Most times, from what I've seen, default page template works the best, but you do have the different offerings and so you can play around with it, see what works. Add HTML before and after calendar. Meanwhile, what this does is this just allows you to add a little HTML either before or after the calendar on the front end. Right here, you'll see that I've just added some simple H1 tags. If I go over and look at it, you'll see those H1 tags are appearing here before and again after. You can do more there. Those are on the more simple side, but this is just to show you it literally does exactly what it says. It adds your blurb before or after the code. You can also add padding, whatever. 
There are the two offerings. You can use one. You can use not the other. It doesn't really matter. You can use no, neither. I ignore them often and don't really use them at all, but they are there at your disposal. Afterwards, we have the customized defaults. And now in order to use these, you need to make sure this checkbox is enabled. If the checkbox isn't enabled, you're not going to have any defaults set up. But once you've done so, you can set everything from a default organizer and a default venue to just a default city, just a default state, whatever. What this does is when somebody comes in to create new events on the site, this stuff is automatically populated for them already, so they don't have to go through all the motions of creating this from scratch. If you host all your events, let's say, in the same city, chances are you can just set the default city, state, country, etc., because nobody's going to have to change from that. This is more than anything meant to save you time. You don't have to use it at all if you don't want to. The additional fields, which is the really the last pro offering, are the way that you could set up custom meta for your events. Now, what this is, is additional hard-coded front-end data that appears on the event listings and shows above your actual event description in the same box where the start time, end time, venue, organizer, etc. all appear. You'll see I've added a few here, and I'm not going to go over this too much in depth because we did a separate screencast on this previously, but the ones that I've added here uh, cover all the, all the different offerings we have. I have radio buttons, which is going to cover the prizes, so that when somebody's creating an event, they can choose whether the prizes offered up are horses, shields, or gloves. The catering is checkbox, so unlike the radio button, somebody can select multiple offerings on who the caterer is. They can say mom, dad, Aunt Jane, all of the above, whatever they want. Open to the public is our drop down, which when they're creating the events, they will be able to say, is this going to be open to the public? Somebody will go and pick from the drop down, yes, no, or show up and find out. Again, this is one where they only have one option they can select, though. They cannot, like the checkbox, pick multiple options here. And then the text field is just a basic text field where they can write in a person's name, what, what have you. You'll see if I go over to create a new event, how those are going to operate. In addition to my basic event details, all my custom fields show up. Again, I can pick one of these, I can pick any of these, and I can pick one from the drop down here. That pretty much covers what the pro offerings on the settings page are. I'm going to save these, make sure everything looks good. And now I'm going to go and deactivate pro just so you can see what you get on the free core version. If I deactivate pro from my plugins list, you do still have some settings that you can configure here. They just aren't quite as broad as they were in the pro version. The save defaults are gone. The custom meta is gone. But you still have the default view, the comments, the multi-day event cutoff, etc. You also still have the before and after HTML for your theme. So that's pretty much it on the settings page. If you guys do have additional questions on these, we're going to be building out more documentation going forward, and you can always post something in the forum. Thanks a lot.